Yo, welcome to Copycat Episode 1. And this time we'll be focusing on Zani. That's my man. That's my brother. It's a huge inspiration. And let's just find out some of the things that make his pieces tick and connect with people. So, what does work? His pieces are very grounded and we got a lot of muted tones in most of his artwork. Each of his pieces always tells a story, at least in some capacity, and that's what makes it so special. There's a lot of nature involved, and my man is a big horror genre fan, and he takes a lot of inspiration from the Souls games. So, let's get right into it. So, let's start in Daz. We start off with the um, G8 male base model, add a, um, a night suit onto that, and make sure that he's sitting, because I know I want to put him on the bed. Uh, I will now proceed to just adjust the pose, make sure it makes sense, and then remove some parts of the armor and uh, add new ones. Make sure to find a weapon that's suitable for him, because I do like uh, the long swords. Um, exchange the helmet and then just save that out and add a bed to the scene. I got a, a default one that makes sense. It looks old and... Yeah, so we got skeletons as well. Make sure to never forget those. Uh, if you toggle off smart content, then you can just add any pose you want, even if it's not uh, made for that skeleton. So I saved out two and I'll drag everything into cinema. What I'm doing right now is I'm uh, adjusting all the materials, um, sorting them. So to make sure that I can have one metal and like, make the straps into one material and make sure that everything's neat and tidy so I can simply jump back and forth. I do know that I will not need to uh, do every material for the different armor parts separately because I know that I'll just have one metal material with a basic bump map that controls everything because we will not go that close. Uh, we just need to make sure that he looks roughened up. And yeah, I adjusted and combined all the materials necessary. Now I'm making sure the scene's neat and tidy in terms of hierarchy. And then I'm copying that. No, oh uh, yeah, um, uh, I'm converting the materials, of course, first. And what I will do now is I'll copy uh, after I place the skeleton. And oh yeah, right, I do the move tool and um, make sure that he's visible under the bed. Just drag the sheets a bit up. And now I'll copy the knight after I place those walls uh, and the ground. I'll copy the knight over and combine them. Then I use polygon reduction so I can put that guy into Marvelous Designer because I do know that I want to put a blanket on him. Um, so to make sure Marvelous isn't struggling, I did polygon reduction to like 60% or something. Just put that OBJ in there, place a rectangle, and then I'll do some line tags, so I'll make sure that I'll tell the rectangle the, to have certain points to attach to the avatar or to the model we imported, and those are sticking. As you can see, I'm just, it's just a regular blanket sticking those onto him, and then I make sure to adjust them, also make sure to put the particle range uh, at 10, so there's no clipping involved or anything. I tried thickness, but I'll keep it thin because I'll do thickness inside cinema with the cloth surface tag uh, at the end there. And then I just make sure to put that thing into the UV box so I can add the texture later. Put that into cinema, add the cloth surface, which I ended up not using because it messed with my render at some point. So I just got rid of it. And yeah, so... What you'll see me doing now is placing the walls, um, just basic walls, grab a window from the Megascan's Quixel Bridge, remove those vertices and cut a hole in the wall basically. Now I'm just made a regular metallic material, haven't changed anything, put a light behind him and a light in front of him. I will get rid of the light in front of him eventually because the HDRI is doing what I need. Um, as you can see, I'm now just finding new materials from the Megascans library, put them on the walls, put one on the ground, a mossy one, like a rocky moss ground to make sure 
you get the sense of isolation and then that he's living in a room where he's been for a long time. What you see me doing now is googling blankets or rugs. Uh, since it's a personal project, I can just go ahead and google away, use them, it doesn't matter. Uh, put that into the UV, UV map we exported earlier from Marvelous Designer. And I'll use the Photoshop function to create a normal map of this. Pretty basic. Uh, you won't see it anyways because we're not going close in, but I just did it. Because why not? Apply that. Make sure to color correct it. And yeah, what you see me... Yeah, what I'll be doing now is I'll populate the scene with trees just to get some more details in there and to tell a story. Um, I want to tell the story of this knight that doesn't really like to go up, but he has to because there's no time for rest. Uh, he's living in this abandoned place, overgrown trees and everything. You see me trying to get another skeleton in there, but it didn't work out. The one in the bed is fine. And yeah, just place more trees. Um, adjust the tree material from for the branches and the trunk and then using forester as well i'll add in some more grass just to get that little bit of detail in there because you do want to get the sense of yeah like i said earlier that he's been living there for a long time it's all really really basic materials i just adjusted the straps and just made his skin really dark so you can't see it through the helmet Get a chair from the Megascans library, get a drawer like a little one, put another one under the bed. Just adjust the materials using the color correction node to make them more muted. Um, for the grass, for example, I didn't even need to convert them to the octane material. It works fine with the regular diffuse material um, because what Zani does in a lot of his artworks is have just all these natural, muted, beautiful tones that go really well together and sometimes if you don't go close in you don't need transmission on the grass you don't need like the gloss highlights it makes more sense to just not do it because it works and i added a fog to our octane sky played a bit around with this and what you can see me doing now is after placing everything i tidied it up put an octane object tag on everything and then just give each of them their own number and their own color so i can render out those passes at the end um, in Photoshop, I do render out more passes than I end up needing most of the time, but, you know, why not do it? I have volume, I have uh, the bloom in the post pass, the object layer color, um, so I can neatly select all of them inside Photoshop without having to do any kind of pen tool action or whatsoever. And yeah, it, just to make sure that once you export it, that your workflow in Photoshop will go over smoothly. Now I play around with the ambient occlusion, which I also did not end up using, but yeah, why not export it anyways, right? And there we are in Photoshop. Pretty basic, regular image and the shading normals, which I also won't be using. Um, yeah, use the black and the object layer colors to cut out the window selected and put a sky in there using a clipping mask. And then I'll do some basic cam camera raw color correction, you know, just to get a little bit more of that isolation sense going of that, you know, it's another one of those days. He doesn't want to get up, but he has to. It's foggy, it's cloudy, it's, it's not nice out, but he has to do it anyways. I'll get that green tint in there to, yeah, to make it a bit more earthy. And yeah, add the post and the volume for the window so it has a bit more glow and yeah that's the end result